I want to talk about Grado Labs because they're really, really, really good for what they are, I feel. Like, um, they were one of the earlier brands that I bought anything from. That They're that way with a lot of people. But, you know, like, I, I had a couple of pairs of headphones eventually, and I was like, I've got too many. So I gave away my Grado SR125Xs to someone I care about, right? And then I immediately realized that I just instantly missed them. <laughs> so I got these SR80Es, a discontinued model that was on sale on their website, so you know, it was actually cheaper. And just... Alright, the, the, well the main thing they've got is my catchphrase, treble clarity. That's really what these are all about. They have irrationally sharp treble on them. Which, if you don't want, you will hate these. But if you are okay with that, these are incredibly clear and precise, considering that this specific pair here was less than 100 bucks. <laughs> uh, the Prestige series now starts at like 100 with shipping anywhere in the continental United States. And the thing is... These are made in the United States. They are made in New York out of parts made in New York. And like... <laughs> I am not normally a terribly patriotic person, I must admit, these make me proud to be an American. This is a- this is quite a thing. Like, um... What else do I have that I think is really good for the price? This recent acquisition. Completely different in every way, designed for completely different purposes, with completely different construction, built on a different continent. But see, these, depending on the price you get, can be 150 to 200. The modern low-end prestige series is like 100. But like, these are ridiculously mass-produced in a giant factory that's dedicated to pumping these out for the entire world. These are made on one floor of a three-story house in the outskirts of Brooklyn. <laughs> yes! How? <laughs> like, you see, like, pictures of it, and I'm like, oh, well, I mean, three stories is substantial, and they're like, oh, well, see, like, this floor here is where we have our archive. And this floor here is where we make our phonograph cartridges, because that's actually our primary business. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> you just have, like... <laughs> Like one story that they're building these things in, all of them for the whole world, and you can get into that for like a hundred bucks, and it's just, I'm very impressed by it, really, as you can tell. <sighs> like here, let me let me show this lovely detail here. Let me see if I can focus in on it. You may be able to see. That on the connector, I have worn much of the gold plating off. That's because I just sit there and use these all day. <laughs> like, as I'm, as I'm editing this video, which I will have to do because of my new recording method, I will probably be wearing these freaking headphones here. <laughs> Excuse me. I just... I'm like, okay, yes, they are, they are cheaply made. Um... They are not user serviceable. Most of this is hot glued together. And that that does kind of suck. Yeah. It's got all sorts of plastic mechanisms. Uh, the headband is designed to be bent, as you can hopefully imagine from the fact that it was very bent by accident when I tried to carry too many things at once. But that's that's actually what I missed about them when I got rid of my old pair. Is that, you know... It's nice to have a pair of headphones that, like, I don't feel ter about, terrible about wearing, like, with wet hair or something like that, because it's just, it's, it's just plastic. There's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing there that I feel bad about destroying. These are just sponges. It's, it's fine. <laughs> it's probably not good for them, but, I mean, like, I have my lovely four hundred and five hundred dollar pairs of headphones it's like i i am worried about touching them 
because, oh my gosh, no, I don't want to damage them, and I don't want to have to spend 50 bucks on a new set of ear pads and all this sort of stuff. Like, this, <laughs> this is a really, really useful niche to have. Is just really pretty cheap. Not really cheap, because they're not conventionally actually cheap. It's, again, like a hundred bucks you can get the, the cheap ones. But I mean, relatively, that's not bad. <laughs> Uh, tuning, yeah, the ridiculous treble, yes, they have so much, like, it does actually kind of, to me, limit some of the mixes I can listen to, but that extreme treble really brings out, like, the breathiness and the vocals, and it gives you, like, better, like, sense of reverb, reverb and everything like that, it's, it's really, it, 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 it's definitely not veiled at all, I can tell you that. The mid-range is decently flat in these, which is nice. Um, that's really meant to be like their defining thing, I think, is just how like consistent the mid-range is for the level of responsiveness they have and for the price tag. The bass, they get a bad rap for, but it's not that bad, really. There is bass there. They're bassier than some things. I mean, like, come on. Uh, interestingly enough, sub bass is no. I I do have a song I listen to specifically to test for sub bass. Um, what's it called? I know the end by Phoebe Bridgers. You get to around the mid section and there's like some really nice sub bass that's not really heavily attached to anything else, and it's a really good control because like bass and sub bass, it's easy to mix them up in a lot of mixes because they always go hand in hand. But yeah, that's what I listen to there uh, with my Bayer Dynamics or my Austrian Audios or my Mezes. You get to that part, it starts to sound like there's a helicopter going overhead. These guys, it just, nothing changes. It just sounds the same. But still though, that it's got decent enough bass. It's got a really nice flat mid-range. It's got all the treble clarity you can get. I really, really, really like these. Um... If everything in my collection was destroyed tomorrow for some reason, and like a fire or a tornado or like an alien abduction again, then I would probably go immediately and buy another pair of these, because this would probably be my priority. I can't imagine anything else I'd buy first. So yeah, I'm speaking so highly of these, you know, I, I figured... <laughs> I figured it's time to bring out the big brother. Because, yeah, these, again, were less than a hundred bucks, but they, they were on sale, you know. So I decided, okay, well, this week I've, this one week, I worked for way more hours than I was supposed to at work. And, you know, it's, it's a smaller place, so there's not, like, meal breaks and stuff like that. So I got home in a terrible mood and was like, okay, well, how much, how, what, what can they do if I give them more money? And so these are the most expensive pair of headphones I have. Uh, the wood chest was separate, but I purchased it with the headphones and they came in this freaking treasure chest and it was the proudest moment of my life. Uh, 500 bucks, I think 550, plus the case, the Grado Reference Series. I, I do like them. I, I, keep, I, I bring them out for special occasions. Um, you might be able to make out, just you can see through the drivers, which is pretty nice. <laughs> but I'm of two minds about these, because they're not... What it is, is it's a more refined version of this. Which makes sense, I suppose. They're building them on the same floor. These have a little bit milder treble. And a little bit boosted bass, still no sub bass, but like, it's the same basic function of headphone, just like, a little more mature, I would say. Which on one hand, at this price tag, I would have loved them to be something different. But on the other hand, I bought them because I really liked how the Grado sounded, and they're a refined version of that, so like, how mad could I possibly be? And the answer is, I am not mad. These are really freaking cool. <laughs> I love this weird lathed construction they got on them, you know? 
That's what maple, some sort of hemp and resin block, and more maple. I really love these grills. It looks like, like the intake of like some sort of jet or something like that. I don't know. Ear cushions are easy enough to replace on them. You just pop them on and off. It doesn't matter. It's got basically the same adjustment mechanism, but the headband is different than either the E or the X version of the Prestige series. It's a little bit nicer leather. I, that's fine. I'll take that. But yeah, you can just directly see the driver, and I love that. <laughs> so yeah, that's... If you like Grado, these are good. If you don't like Grado, they're not good. Because again, it's, it's a similar style of headphone. It's just nicer to look at and it's a little more balanced I would say like a little bit so yeah that's um I'm trying to think if I have any more thoughts to share about them I think that's about it so yeah I highly recommend <laughs> the Great Up Prestige series because yeah, they are decent, especially for the price. Like you, you can see the paint is worn off because, I mean, I, I tend to fidget a little bit and let me tell you when you're wearing these things, you're gonna go like this occasionally because just, it is very nice. I, I don't know. <laughs> and yes, I have been trying to bend this headband back and it doesn't, it's just shaped like that now. I don't know why, but that is supposed to be like a thing you do to fit these properly is to adjust this in or out. Oh, I should probably mention the freaking cables, because that's going to be a deal breaker for some people, I assume. It's... It's like a freaking guitar cable. It's... And the new ones are woven, which actually makes them pretty noisy, in my opinion. I mean, it's sturdier, but... Uh, <laughs> they are... They are substantial cables. Like... I've heard people complain about the cables on the Bayer Dynamics with these coils. And first of all, I have actually played bass with that as the output cable for the bass. So this this is way less irritating than that. And also, it's a heavy cable, but <laughs> I use the, the Grado Labs one every freaking day. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not that big of an adjustment. I do wish they came with cases. But hey, they're trying to save money because they have to make these in the United States for a very low price. I mean, that's it's hard to do, right? So anyway, yeah, that's always something to consider. I At, at the 100-ish price point, I do kind of think that anyone who's like me and really likes treble probably should have one of these somewhere if they can manage it because it's just such a I would call it essential really it's it's so in that genre it's really 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 good so yeah um thanks for watching uh, I hope you have a nice evening